Father, we just pray as we come around to worship your name this morning, Father, that, that you'll just take over, Lord. Father, we just pray that the Holy Spirit will move within the place this morning, Father. We give you all the glory and we want to worship your name this morning, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Maybe some people in this room that need those chains breaking this morning. Amen. Whatever the circumstance is, just hand it over to the Lord this morning. Mm. Yes, Lord Jesus, we break in these chains here right now. In this room, we break in the chains over debt. We're breaking those chains over cancer. We're breaking the chains over the circumstances, Lord Jesus. Whatever it is, we're laying it at your feet, Lord. At the foot of the cross, we hand it to Chains fall, fear bow here now. Cause Jesus, you change everything. Lives healed, hope found here now. Jesus, you come on, sing that again. Chains, chains fall. Jesus. 
show us your glory, show us your glory. Let every burden heart be holy for
gives me great pleasure to introduce Rona to you at this particular point in time. Quite a number of our folks uh, over the past four years or so have been involved with um, supporting and helping children with in, in compassion, under the umbrella of compassion. And uh, Rona is here just to share with us, give us updates and whatever else has got has placed upon your heart. Amen. So let's give her a warm welcome, shall we, in Jesus' name. Good morning. Oh, no, 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 no. I need to hear your voices. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, oh my God. That, that, that's more like it. I'm just so delighted. Thank you so much, Pastor Glenn, for inviting me and, and Jill. And um, I feel at home. I was saying earlier on that um, 17, it was about 17 years ago, my very first church that I attended for a short while was Leighton Stone, Ealing. And um, I was there with Pastor Mervyn and Pastor Sam. So to be here in another Elim church, I'm at home. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you for such a warm welcome. I'm really, really delighted to be here. Show my age now. I need to put my glasses on. I'm so sorry. Um, so I am Rona Anderson from Compassion Christian Child Development Organization. And um, our main model is one to, can you all hear me okay? Yeah, our, our main model is one-to-one -one child sponsorship. And I'm just delighted that yeah, many of you here literally sponsor children. Just want to say that you might detect a slight accent Anybody guess where I'm from? Oh, gosh, that was too easy. <laughs> yeah, I'm from a place which um, the Eurovisions will be held next year, 2023. And just really delighted. And, you know, in my hometown. And I, I just want to, I feel a joy, great joy, because there's something amazing that's going to take place. And something that we can all celebrate about and we've had a time of the past few years where we you know well currently you know we're in a um a, a cost of living crisis we haven't got a prime minister you know <laughs> there's you know so much going on we've had you know the pandemic for two years there's you know inflation you know rise you know cost of living there's various strikes that have been taking place but I'm to here to tell you about the good things, especially that Romford Elim have actually been doing. Great works, absolutely great works. You've been transforming the lives of many, many children. I'm just delighted to celebrate with you because you've been releasing children from poverty all in the name of Jesus through your sponsorship. You've been providing them with, you know, the means to get education, clean water, health care. And because with compassion, we work with churches in the developing world, the children also get to hear the word of God. So through the church partnership, the next slide, please. Thank you. 20 children are currently being sponsored through Romford Elim. And I just want to give you a big hand, a round of applause. At least half of them are in Burkina Faso. And yeah, together we're releasing children from poverty. There are, you know, there's one in Ghana, seven in Bolivia, and you're doing a fantastic job. Because many of your children are in Burkina Faso, I just want to show you just a, a short video um, about a child who's grown up in Burkina Faso who's currently being um, sponsored. Thank you. Je m'appelle Dorian. Je vis au Burkina Faso. Je suis en classe de seconde A. Au premier trimestre, j'ai été la quatrième de ma classe, et parce que le trimestre était vraiment serré. Mais au deuxième trimestre, je peux dire que j'ai mis du paquet, j'ai fait des efforts. J'ai été la première de ma classe et vraiment ça me réjouit. Mes parents sont fiers de moi. Je bénis le Seigneur pour cela. 
Et le C2 est également l'une des causes de mon succès. On a vraiment beaucoup d'enseignements. Il y a les enseignements et il y a eu un enseignement récemment qui m'a beaucoup marqué. Je, cet enseignement m'a beaucoup aidé. Il s'agit de l'enseignement sur comment réussir à l'école. Lors de cet enseignement, on nous a vraiment donné plusieurs techniques pour apprendre les leçons, comment mettre en pratique ces leçons et également comment persévérer, même quand c'est difficile. Pendant la période de la pandémie de la COVID-19, le C2 m'a beaucoup soutenu, ma famille et moi. Une fois, un tonton du C2 m'a appelé et quand je suis arrivée, à ma grande surprise, ils nous ont offert un sac de riz de 50 kg avec un bidon d'huile. Et à la maison, c'était vraiment une joie pour ma famille et moi. Et en ce moment, le Burkina fait face à un défi majeur qui est l'insécurité. Nous avons plusieurs déplacés internes dans le pays et nous avons vraiment des personnes qui n'arrivent plus à rester dans leur localité. Également, et il y a le cas de la saison pluvieuse. L'année passée, les pluies n'ont pas été du tout bonnes, ce qui a favorisé une crise alimentaire. En ce moment, il y a une élévation des prix de produits et cela est défavorable pour les personnes les plus démunies. Et nous vous demandons également de prier pour la saison pluvieuse, afin que cette année, la saison pluvieuse soit plus abondante, afin que nous puissions vraiment bien manger, que le pays soit réjoui. Dear sponsor, God bless you. Thank you for your support. God bless you. I love you. <laughs>
So I'm going to ask you, I'm going to set you a challenge. If you could actually write more to the children, just imagine the next time somebody from Compassion comes here and gives you these figures. If you actually wrote more letters to the children. I've got three sponsored children, one in um, Burkina Faso, one in Ethiopia, and I've met him twice, and another one in um, Dominican Republic. And each letter I receive from them, they say, Rona, you know, can you pray for my family? Can you pray for, you know, um, for my school? Can you pray for my teacher? And they say, and I'm also praying for you. And I don't expect that. I really, really don't expect that. That somebody thousands of miles away is actually praying for me. And that's wonderful. But when you write to that child, you get the opportunity to encourage them. Really making a difference in them. And as I said, they love receiving the letters. So I'm just going to encourage you to just write more. And it's so easy. Next slide, please. You, you can download the Compassion app and just communicate straight away. All of the letters are, are, are um, they're, they're literally, um, I said they're, um, in, oh my goodness. Sorry? Yeah, the, the, there is a template, but they're all interpreted. So they'll be interpreted into the language of the child when you write back. When the child writes to you, that letter is interpreted. So it's so easy, really easy. Next slide, please. You have to see your sponsor in 12 girls and eight boys. So again, I, I can't thank you enough. You're, you're amazing. Well done. And the next slide, please. Do you recognize, does anybody sponsor a child here? Do you recognize your child? Excellent. So the next time you communicate with your child, you can just let them know that there was, you know, this lady came to speak at the, you know, the church and um, showed you their pictures. And you can also say that she was from Liverpool. They might be a Liverpool supporter. <laughs> anybody support Liverpool Football Club here? Yay! <laughs> best team so yep so please keep you know corresponding with your children encourage them make such a difference so thank you um the next slide please yeah thank you romford elim for all that you are doing um i am here on behalf of the children i'm also here on behalf of compassion and yeah thank you so much next slide please i just want to bring something to you just want to speak briefly to you on Psalm 37, verse 3 to 6. And I'm reading from the NIV version. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he, and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Amen. So the word says, trust in the Lord and do good. It doesn't just say trust in the Lord. It says, and do good. We all have faith in the Lord, and but we know that faith without work is dead. So you've got to take action. There could be something that, you know, you're listening to today. You know, taking action. You could have been, you know, encouraged by the wonderful worship from our worship leader. Thank you so much. And it's taking action. As a Christian, the Lord dwells in your heart. So you know what's good because the Lord dwells inside. The Holy Spirit is with you. So you know what is good to do. And it goes on to say in the scripture, dwell in the land and enjoy safe pastures. But I'm sorry to say that not everybody can currently dwell in their land and enjoy the safe pastures. Children living in poverty, they can't dwell in their land and enjoy the safe pastures. Some of the girls on the way to school, if they actually manage to, you know, be in a school, 
it's difficult for them. Waking up early hours of the morning when it's still dark, traveling, traveling to school, sometimes it's not safe. So they find it difficult to dwell in safe pastures. Sometimes they've got to get up in the morning and go and, you know, go and fetch water. Walking about three miles to go and collect water when we just turn on the tap, don't we? They've got to walk miles. And when they get to where the water is, sometimes it's contaminated. I was in Tanzania a few years ago. And when I saw the water... The water was like, you know, it was like the colour of the, it was like an orangey colour. So how can you drink that? But in desperation, when you know that you, I mean, we, we can't go without drink. When we, you know, in desperation, without having to walk another three miles, you know, on top of that. That's what's happening. I've just told you about the life expectancy. <laughs> you know, it's so, so difficult. But we want people to be able to, you know, dwell in safe pastures. The scripture says that people can dwell in safe pastures. And we want to help others, don't we? We really, really want to help others. We want to stand, you know, with others and lift them up and encourage them. That's what we're here to do. We are here as Christians to serve, to serve others. to serve our neighbours. And who is our neighbour? We might think, oh yeah, you know, there's Tom or Fred next door. Your neighbour is the one who you show mercy to. Your neighbour could be thousands upon miles, thousands of miles away from you. Like the children I said, who, you know, are praying for me. <laughs> I've got children in, you know, in um, Burkina Faso, in Dominican Republic, and in Ethiopia, who are praying for me. They are my neighbours. They're showing me mercy. And I'm showing it to them by sponsoring them, releasing them from poverty. Your neighbours, you know, the, the children that you're sponsoring or the children that you might actually begin to sponsor. Such as I've got young Kofi here from Ghana. And I've picked up Kofi because... His birthday is on the 16th of November, which is quite soon. Wouldn't that be an amazing birthday present for him to know that he's got a sponsor being released from poverty in the name of Jesus? This beautiful Evelina from Tanzania. Isn't she so cute? Aged three. Her birthday is coming up 3rd of December. We all know that Jesus loves the little children, absolutely loves the little ch children. The scripture also goes on to say, when you do good and take delight in the Lord, trust in him, you will come up shining, bright, so bright. Your life will be so much, it will be so much lighter. I mean, sometimes we carry heavy things, don't we? Carrying heavy burdens. We should cast all of our burdens onto the Lord because he cares for us. And when you do good and trust in the Lord, you know, you, you'll, become, you'll be brighter and lighter when you give the Lord what you're carrying and when you do good. And we do believe that sponsoring children, releasing them from poverty is doing good. Your life will never, ever be the same when you trust in the Lord and do good. It can't be the same. When you trust in the Lord, you'll come up shining. You'll come up shining bright. You know, what we're told, do not hide your light under a bushel, aren't we? The scripture says, do not hide your light under a bushel. You've got so much that you can do, so much that you can give. Even if, you know, I'd love you to sponsor children, more children from Compassion. But even if you don't do that, there's so much that's inside of you. There's so much love. God is inside of you and he is love. 
There's so much love that you can share with your, with, with your friends, with your neighbor. You can help serve. You can help serve in this church. You can help, you know, your neighbor. You can, you know, there's things you can do in work. So much. But I'm saying to you, whatever you do, do good. Trust in the Lord and shine brightly. Um, next slide, please. It's just a video I'd just like to show you. Just about other people whose lives have been transformed through compassion. Thank you. In a given week, we'll go at least for three days without food. The friends that I played with in the neighborhood got captured and was being trained to become child soldiers. We would beg our parents just to buy one apple, but even the rotten ones we could not afford to buy. In a period of 18 months, I lost my small brother Patrick, my mom, and I lost my stepdad because of the terrifying disease of HIV AIDS. When my mother died, I was lost. I was looking for hope, for God to just show me that everything was going to be okay. Not knowing what tomorrow will look like, not knowing whether I would have a home, whether we would live to see the next day. I don't know why Aaron Mitchell decided to sponsor me, but when he did, my whole life changed. A group of people from Compassion showed up at my church. They said, you're going to go to school, and then somebody's going to write to you. I don't have to worry about whether my parents would have enough money to keep me going to school. Even if I get sick, someone was there to take care of me. I felt safe. I felt wanted. My sponsor is Edwin Bunny. Maria and Hanshru. Aaron, me too. Five women from a Lutheran church that were sponsoring me. I am now a physical therapist and I'm working in a hospital. Clinical social worker. I was the first child in my family to go to high school, to go to college. I have a bachelor and a master in, in, in biomedical engineering, a second master in engineering management, and uh, I called me into ministry, so I had to go and get a third master. I have a ministry called Youth Arise Africa that works with boys who don't have father figures. We opened a small school. It's now providing the same opportunity that Compassion provided to me so that they too can break out of the cycle of poverty. Whatever you do for the least of these, you do for me. You do for me. You did for me. You did it for me. Sponsor a child today to break the cycle of poverty in a child's life like my sponsor did for me. You see, you can make a difference, a real, real difference in somebody's life. You can trust in the Lord and do good. It really, really makes a difference sponsoring a child. Through compassion, there are two million children being sponsored through compassion. And it sounds great, doesn't it? Two million. But there are actually 400 million children still living in abject poverty. You can transform a life. It just takes that one. I always think, well, I'm, my hope is that one of my sponsored children literally becomes a prime minister of their country. It's possible. Who knows it? It's possible. Gosh, it would be possible in the UK, wouldn't it? <laughs> but it is possible. And just imagine if you sponsored a child and that's what they became. Or just imagine if you sponsored a child and the legacy was that they were just alive. That's, that's reason enough, isn't it? Just to know that that child is still living. So um, if you do actually want to sponsor a child, if you want to sponsor more children, I've got children at the back with me, child profiles. 
do please come and see me. It's £28 per month to sponsor a child. Couples can sponsor, sponsor children if they want or a group of you. So um, do come and see me. I've got many, many children at the back. And wouldn't it be great if these two who are about to be, you know, have their birthdays, if we gave them a great birthday present. So may God continue blessing you. Thank you so much. Oh, there's another slide as well. Um, you can also, if you wanted to, go online and sponsor a child. But the children who I've currently got with me are waiting, waiting, and they're looking forward to you sponsoring them. So God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Rona. Um, we just want to pray with you before you, before you disappear. Um, and by saying disappear, she'll, she'll just be at the back by her table. Do pay her a visit um, if uh, God has been speaking to you and stirring something within you. Um, we do praise God that she's come. Amen. Because uh, we have been involved and continue to be involved in this wonderful work. ask you to pray for the children that would be wonderful thank you yeah father we give you thanks and praise for the wonderful work that you are doing through compassion which has direct influence on the lives of individual children and lord god we pray that you will continue to open doors of provision for those children who lord god for many are lost we pray, Lord, that you'll give so many more purpose, support, help, and a future. And gracious Heavenly Father, we pray, therefore, that the work of compassion will continue to excel. We commit Rona into your hands. Thank you for uh, sharing her heart, this presentation. And Lord God, uh, for her personal involvement as well, we pray that uh, her sponsored children will prosper and do well. Lord, we thank you for the gospel that goes out through a practical ministry and that many of these children, we pray, will come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Father, we pray from small seeds, do something big. And may, may they become prime ministers, may they become um, you know, uh, leaders in industry and leaders in manufacturing and leaders in education and influencers for their nation, for their borough for their um, council whatever lord god we pray may they be influencers so father hear our prayer we give you thanks for this presentation today in jesus name amen amen let's give Rona a big round of applause shall we thank you so much um and do make sure that you pay a visit to the table. Uh, don't let this moment pass you by, as it were. She'll be delighted to just share with you and fill you in with even more. Um, I just wanted to just round off with, with an encouragement. Uh, because uh, there's been a, a recent death, and that has been of Pastor John Lancaster. Now, John Lancaster was uh, our minister in Bridge Street, Elim Church. So when I got saved, my first Sunday at Bridge Street, I, wa I walked in. He was the pastor being inducted. That was his first service. So for the first five years of my life, um, he was my pastor. And he was truly a man of God. Truly a man of God. Uh, in fact, for me, for Steve, for Andy, um, they are both ministers at Leeds now. Um, you know, he used to call us his boys. Well, Andy was his boy because he was his son, but we weren't. And there was others in the youth in the youth team who weren't. But he he, he always used to look at us as being his sons. We had a very close relationship and respected him no end. And he really just opened the things of the spirit to us so so much because it was what he was experiencing as he led in Eastbourne, then he was posted to, to Leeds, and he brought that wave of what God was doing in him and through him to Leeds. And Leeds just began to 
explode with the things of the Spirit. And yeah, just as I was, I was thinking, you know, just as a short word at the end of, of this presentation, um, I just wanted to, out of respect for him, just to share something that he shared with us, if that's okay. Is that all right? And the picture was that of the river of God in Ezekiel 47. And I just want to say a few words hinged on three things that he said, which have always stuck with me. Because in, in Ezekiel 47, it speaks about the river of God. It speaks about the temple. Ezekiel was very much um, uh, the, the, the temple at the end of, of the whole of Ezekiel is the climax. When you read about the temple and its dimensions and stuff, it can be really boring. But it's actually the climax of the book because having started with him, seeing a vision of God and he became a prophet from that point on, it ends with the return of the glory of God to his nation. And that was signified and focused upon the temple being rebuilt and coming down. And, and so this picture of the temple was truly the climax of the book. Maybe boring to us as we read it, but actually when you get behind the story, it brings new life. Three things that were mentioned. Is that you, Lord? <laughs> Ezekiel 47. The man brought me back to the entrance of the temple, and I saw water coming from under the threshold of the temple towards the east for the temple faced the east and the water was coming down from under the south side of the temple south of the altar the first thing is the source of the river of God and you have this temple you have this structure but when you look at where this, the, the, rip, the river is coming from under the throne and what John said was Our structures do not, do not control the Spirit of God. Because when we talk about the river of God, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. And he says, when you look at where the, the river was flowing, the source of it didn't come from the throne. It didn't come from our structures. It didn't come from Elim. It didn't come from any structure that we might have. It certainly didn't come from Romford Elim or any individual church. The source of the river of God is God. And no structure can contain it. The source of the Holy Spirit does not come from what we do. It does not come from anything that we can manufacture or make happen or seek to to, to manufacture in any way, shape, or form. It comes from God himself. He is the source. And when it comes to the things of the Spirit, we have to really appreciate that it comes from God. John Stott says, Without the Holy Spirit, Christian discipleship would be inconceivable, even impossible, there can be no life without the life giver, no understanding without the spirit of truth, no fellowship without the unity of the spirit, no Christ-likeness of character apart from his fruit, and no effective witness without his power. As a body without breath is a corpse, so the church without the spirit is dead. Dare I hear an amen for that? Because it will just be our manufactured words and our structures and our efforts. But if we are not oiled by the Holy Spirit, we will not achieve God's purpose and God's plan. We don't, we don't contain the Spirit. We don't control Him. He breaks in and breaks out. He ushers in God's plan and God's purpose. And as a church, do we want to be in God's plan? Do we want to be in God's purpose? then we need the Holy Spirit at the end of the day. I've used the example before, so forgive me, it, it just fits, it fits aptly because I don't speak from um, just a theological point of view and I don't speak from um, what I would like to happen. I speak from what I've seen. 
and experienced. And that time in Germany, when I, I was uh, speaking to young people about the Holy Spirit, and they were, first language in East Germany then was, was German, but then it was Russian. And so they didn't speak English, because that was way down the line then. This was back in 89. And um, it came where it was time to ask for the Holy Spirit to come. And there I was standing with some young people and my friend who was interpreting. And all I did was read the scripture because I couldn't say any jokes. I couldn't do anything because it got lost in translation. So all I could do was read the scripture about the Holy Spirit and read some verses. Anybody wants to receive the Holy Spirit, come. And there was six young people who said yes. And so we took them aside to another room and shut the door and there they were looking at me. And then I was a student. We were, we were students from the Bible college. And the door shut and they were looking at me as if to say, okay, so what next? <laughs> and just fear just gripped me. I, my mouth went dry. I couldn't speak. And I was thinking, what if nothing happens? What if God doesn't come? What if... And it was, it was all if it all depended on me. And before me was this young guy who had been sat, just like Ponley sat, with his arms crossed. He was on the front row, but he was like this with his head to side, totally bored as a young person to whatever I was saying. It, so it looked to me. But when we asked, does anybody want to receive? He came forward and he was there, stood like that. And again, that just made it worse. And so I just felt God say, just pray, stop messing around. So I began to put my hand out to pray for him. In desperation, I said, Lord, and I, I got L out. And then I heard, bloom. And I opened my eyes, and he was on the floor. Shaka baranda basute debe shiba baka baranda. And he was speaking in tongues. Two young people over the other side of the room with Neville. They were breaking out in tongues and speaking for the first time. And the Spirit of God just came. And for me, that was really important. Because it had nothing to do with me. I was dying. I was dying. But I know that God comes by his Spirit. From that moment, I believed it. But from that moment, when you see it with your own eyes, our God is real. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God is real. The Spirit of God is real and he does a real work. And I recognize, hey, without him, it's manufactured. It's emotional. But with him, there's power. There's reality and there's release. The source of the river of God does not come from our structures and from what we do. Yes, we teach and we instruct and that helps and gives understanding. But it's always coming from God. And therefore, we need that relationship with God to get him. Amen? The second thing that John says was the force of the river. Because it says there um, in verse 47, chapter 47, as the, uh, verse 3, As the man went eastward with a measuring line in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits and then led me through the waters. They were ankle deep. He measured off another thousand cubits and he led me through the waters Knee deep, he measured off another thousand, uh, thousand um, cubits, and it was waist deep. He measured off another thousand, but now it was a river that I could not cross because the water had risen and was deep enough to swim in, a river that no one could cross. And he asked me, son of man, do you see this? So in other words, this, this picture that he sees of the temple and, and the throne room and the river of God starting off as a trickle coming from under the throne and then flowing, very quickly it develops into a river. It's not normal. What, what basically is, is we're seeing here is a supernatural occurrence here. A river that starts off as a trickle and then within less than a mile and a half, it's a torrent that no one can cross. The only way that, a, the way that a rivers grow to be powerful and big is by tributaries coming in from all off the high ground and flowing. And then the river gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. There's no tributaries here. There's just God. It's the Spirit of God 
that is flowing straight from the source. He doesn't need any tributaries. He doesn't need our help. Straight from the source. And the river grows very, very quickly. It's a supernatural river. We cannot manufacture supernatural. We cannot manufacture things that break our understanding and humanity's understanding of the way the world works. Only God can do that. But all he wants is a people who acknowledge and who believe that he can. And then he will. And the third thing John mentioned was the course of the river. Verse 7. When I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river. He said to me, This water flows towards the eastern region and goes down into the Araba, where it enters the sea. When it empties into the sea, the water there becomes fresh. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. There will be large numbers of fish because their water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. Hallelujah. Fishermen will stand along the shore from the Engedi to En Egleim. And there there will be places of spreading nets. The fish will be as m of many kinds, like the fish of the great sea. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fall. Every month they will bear, they will bear fruit, because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food, and their leaves for healing. What a vision! What a picture! The course of the river, this river from God, it flows out into the Araba. The Araba literally means desolate and dry, dry area. So it's flowing out into the desert that bears nothing except dust. But where the river flows, their life begins. Trees on either side, fruitfulness, green grass, all the stuff that is the essence of of a land flowing with milk and honey. It all comes from the river of God. But it doesn't stop there. It flows then into the sea, which is salt sea, where we can't live off salt sea, but where the Spirit of God comes, it changes saltiness into clear, crystal drinking water that life can flourish. And so the course of the river is to reach out there and to bring life. Amen? To bring life. So we can't, we can't produce this source. It comes from God, the river of God, the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God is a supernatural river that does things above and beyond what we can think or imagine. There's no limit. But its purpose is to be out there. Its purpose is to go out into the waste areas, to the difficult areas, to the dry areas, to the dead areas. Because where the Spirit flows, He brings life. That's true for us. And if there's anybody here and you feel, I'm dead spiritually, this is for you. Because the Spirit brings life. The Spirit brings life. And again, I know this. Because I've experienced it. You know it because you've experienced it. And if you've been through dryness, dry period, the thing that changes is suddenly when the Spirit of God comes. And you are reignited. Amen? You are reignited despite maybe trying to read the Bible and read this and do this and, and come to church and do that and still nothing's happening. You're still, you're still down there. But when the Spirit of God comes... You're lifted. And suddenly everything comes back into place. And the energy comes back. The vitality comes back. The life comes back. Because you've been touched by the Spirit of God. The river of God. And where the river ends up is in the sea. 
and it makes even the sea into fresh water. It's unstoppable. Unstoppable. So friends, this morning, let's stand together. Let's stand together. Let's lift our hands. Let's lift our spirits. Let's lift our voices and call out to the living God. We do not serve a dead God. We do not serve structures. We don't serve Elim in that sense of being a structure. We are part of the family of God and the head is Christ. And from his throne room flows the river of God, the spirit of God to bring life. So in Jesus' name, dryness be gone. In Jesus' name, where there is that deadness of spirit. Now, this morning, we break free in Jesus' name. It's the Spirit of God. Baptize me afresh. He doesn't want to just do it up to your feet, to your knees, to your waist. He wants you to swim. Hallelujah. He wants you to swim in the river of God. Totally encapsulated in him and being able to be swept and taken into areas of dryness so that you can bless others, so that they can be released. But it's got to begin with you. So in, in Jesus' name, let that dryness and deadness be gone. Let the Spirit of God come afresh and fill you from within. Let the fountain burst again and say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Send me. Fill me. Lead me. Guide me, Spirit of God. You are the one I need. You are the one I need. And dear God, we pray in the name of Jesus for fruitfulness. That was the vision you gave the church, Lord. You gave us that vision through words that we would be a place of refreshment, a place where the river flows, that there is an abundance of, of vegetation and fruitfulness. So, Father, fulfill your word. Continue to fulfill your word. We've sensed the moving of your spirit amongst us in these past days. And we want more, Lord. We want more, Lord. We pray, Lord God, as we come together in prayer, as we come tonight, as we come uh, in the morning. Lord, oh God, Spirit of God, just excite our spirit. Because you have your plan and your purpose. You have desires. And Lord God, you need your spirit-filled people to accomplish it. So fill us afresh. In Jesus' name. Put your hand on your neighbor next to you. <laughs> yeah, link up with someone. Don't be alone. And just repeat after me. Father, I pray for my brother or sister. Fill them afresh. May they know the abundance of the Holy Spirit. May anything that was dead come back to life. Anything that was dry, once again become fluid, fruitful, filled with life. We ask it in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Praise God.